You'll notice that I have an underlay that's called Embellish Fusible Underlay Bold that is fused to the back of this. What I really like about this is the fact that this is almost like a tree coat. It's soft. It can be used, for instance, on the back of sweaters or garments that you're making for a baby. But you notice the hand of this. It keeps a nice, supple hand, and it'll support wear and tear and laundry, and then also the number of stitches that will be on the quilt. Additionally, I'm using Embellish Fusible Bold Tearaway. That's what's in my hoop. I am not necessarily fusing what I'm sewing right now to it. It's, I didn't find it necessary to fuse it. But if I wanted to, I have that capability. So one layer of this will support approximately 10,000 stitches. And it, if you do fuse it, it's going to prevent stretching. The other thing I'm using is Mylar. And you can see a piece of the Mylar here. In the package of Mylar that I have that came along with my products, there are three sheets of Mylar, and the Mylar tears. So when you stitch, it's so easy to, to tear this away, and I'll show you that in the video. It gives a beautiful sheen to your fabrics. So when you place it on top of fabrics, it more or less takes on the color of the fabric that's beneath it, but it also is accentuated by the threads. And the threads I'm using are in the embellished line as well. These are a beautiful matte thread. I've never used them before, but I am in love with them because it, it really it looks so different than most em embroidery thread that you know is shiny. So I can see that I'll enjoy using this thread. So we're going to get started. Let me touch my screen. You can see that I've loaded my design and it, it, you can see that the size of this is 10 by 10 as it's designed in the hoop. And that's one reason why I feel that the 10 and 5 8 by the 10 and 5 8 hoop is the best choice for me on my Luminaire. Now what I like to do is I like to, to determine what is the straight of grain and it is the up and down. And I've stitched the first stitch, which is the placement stitch. You can become familiar with these stitches if you want by going to the plus minus and go through the up and down arrow and follow the instructions. And I stitched this stitch in a light color. You can see it right here, my fingers on it. Now what I want to do is to take my fabric and place it over that placement line. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to stitch that down in place. So let me show you at the screen and forget the camera work here. I'm trying to show you every step along the way. So what we're going to do is we'll go to the next portion of the design, which is going to be our tack down. So I'll turn the camera around and I'll let you watch that tack down stitch. All I do is I can kind of keep the fabric flat as I'm stitching. Okay, that's complete. And you can see that what it did is it stitched a triangle. I'm following that line with my finger. Now the next stitch is going to be our placement stitch for the number one. Okay, this is the placement stitch on all of the embroideries. You'll have a, a placement stitch if you have an applique. Our next stitch is going to be the tack down stitch. So you can see this is our tack down. This is going to be stitch four. I'll zoom you back in. And that is going to lock everything in place. So let's go ahead and zoom back out for a moment. I've cut a couple of pieces of my mylar. And what I like to do is to make it large enough so that I can use it for the two numbers and also the wings that are on the B. So I 
just basically take the piece of fabric that I cut out that was my largest piece of pieces of fabric in the square sizes that Hope tells you to cut. And that's large enough to for all of those areas. Now what I'm going to do is stitch out that fill stitch that is for the mylar. So what I'm going to do is take my mylar, place it over my fabric. The first thing I want to do though, is I want to cut this thread, get it out of the way, and I'll place this down over the fabric. Now my job will be, because this has a wrinkle in it, just to make sure that it doesn't move. So I'll go ahead and start my embroidery. Okay, that mylar is, is stitched down. Let me give you a tip. The first design that I stitched out, I did not read the package instructions for the mylar, and I probably didn't read fully through the instructions. So that is why I'm showing you what to do. Do you know that this mylar will just tear away? And it's actually fairly strong when you pick up the sheets. So I was surprised that it tears away so beautifully along the edge of this design. Okay, all the mylar is torn. And we'll set that aside because we're going to use that piece for the another design. Now what we'll do is we'll look at the screen and you notice this is a satin stitch. So we'll keep that same color. So we had the placement. We had the tack down, we had the mylar fill, and then we had the satin stitch. So you're going to use that same color throughout this sequence. Okay, we're now ready to stitch out the next number. So I saved the pieces of mylar. You can see this is from another project. I can use this for the wings for our little bee. So make sure you keep these little pieces of, of mylar because you can use them. Okay, you can see that this is a beautiful design. I do want to get close so you can actually see the luster and this is just gorgeous. Okay, we're going to, to work on the bee next and this is the body of the bee. All right, now what you want to do is you want to lay your mylar down and if you look at the design, the wings, let me turn this so you can see, the wings are on the side of the body, approximately just below the head, but in the full part of the body. Okay, it's going to stitch uh, the little design inside the wings. Be the satin stitch around the bee and then the little tail. The next stitch is going to be our placement stitch. Let me zoom you back out. So this is going to be a placement line. You notice, and I'll show you in just a moment, that I make sure that I have the right triangle. I'm going to stitch this placement line outside of the triangle that we've just stitched out for the, on the backing fabric. This will be a placement line for me to, to flip my triangles right sides together and line up my fabric against that line. Okay, so here is our placement line. You may not be able to see it. I'll, I'll take my tool here and show you that it is right here. It is outside of the tack down for the inside triangle. Take your, your fabric and lay it first right side up because you want to make sure that you have it the right triangle and it's going in the right direction. Then flip it over, and remember when you're dealing with fabric that is cut on the bias, less handling is better. You want to make sure that it is extending at least a half of an inch past each end. So your little corners of your triangle need to extend beyond the uh, edge by at least a, a half an inch. Now you have extra fabric here because you're going to trim this block in the end so don't get too worked up about whether you have 
it place exactly. You just want to make sure you place it on that line because that line is, is what you need. We're going to zoom back out and you'll notice that we're on stitch 16 of 17. We're almost complete with this design. And we'll go ahead and we'll press start. I'll zoom you back in so you can see this. So all I need to do is to just make sure that this stays in place. Now you could trim that seam if you want to a quarter of an inch. However, it's not really necessary on, on this project for it to be an exact quarter of an inch. The quilt police are not going to come out. When you press, make sure that you use a pressing cloth because you don't want to press over the top of all of these beautiful embroideries without having a pressing cloth. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll stitch the final stitch. So our design is complete. And the thing that you'll want to do next is you'll want to take your ruler and you want to leave a quarter inch for your seams outside all of this area so you'll trim all the way around it but follow the instructions because the instructions are very explicit telling you what you need to do next.